first of all, thank you all for coming and uh, and setting aside an hour of your day to uh, to be with us to share this time together. Uh, speaking of sharing, sharing can be a little bit daunting, and sharing your portfolio and your work it can it can feel a little bit vulnerable, and um, we get that. We've all been there. We have all been there. But feedback is one of our guiding principles of our team because without feedback, we're sort of going this alone, and that's that's not the way we want to go about life or our transition into instructional design. And so feedback is huge for us. It helps us to get better. It helps us to sharpen each other. And so like feedback is love <laughs> and it makes all the difference. It's how we improve. And so that's that's really what we're all about in general. And that's what this session is all about is sharing that feedback in, um, in the context of portfolios. Now portfolios themselves aren't like the end all be all portfolios are very important. We know that from the research that we have done, the surveys that we have put out, portfolios do make a difference. They are not the one and only thing that you, that is out there to get a job. It is possible to get jobs without portfolios, but a great portfolio can set you head and shoulders above the competition. It can show off what you can do and really who you are. And so portfolios are really important. They're not just about landing a role though. They are, they do help with that, but especially when you're first starting out. And I, I felt this very deeply myself when I put my portfolio together, it was sort of me establishing myself in the world. as like, I am an instructional designer. Like this is, this is who I am professionally now. And it, it makes everything official. It puts it out there to the, to the world. It displays your skills and it really boosts your confidence in having a portfolio that you put out into the world, like it really establishes who you are professionally and who you are becoming for those of us who are transitioning into instructional design for the first time. So uh, I, I feel like I've been taking the mic for a little while, but, but we, have, we have a couple other um, big members of our team here on the, uh, on the call with us as a, a panel of three to go through and, and give you some of this feedback. So I'm going to hand the mic over to Sabrina and let her introduce herself and then, and then over to Kristen. Hello, I'm Sabrina Gonzalez and I've been a instructional designer for coming up on a year now. And I also am a bootcamp pro and my portfolio has really like <laughs> opened up so many opportunities and I'm very proud of my portfolio. Of course, it's always a work in progress. There are some projects that I still want to add to it that I've, I've worked on, but having that project or sorry, having that portfolio and being able to like lead with that on LinkedIn and like in comments or in direct messages, that's been like the biggest thing for me to find like other work and even just posting it on LinkedIn has gotten me a lot of like people contacting me about work and making sure your portfolio is really strong is like is really important because that's the first impression right that's what they're going to see before they even click into your project so as long as that portfolio starts off strong it's going to open up a lot of doors for you um yeah and i'm, I'm excited to take a look at everything you've been working on i'm going to hand it over to Kristen. That was awesome input, Sabrina. I totally agree. The portfolio is always a work in progress, and that's kind of the experience I've had. Um, I have been an instructional designer for a little over a year and a half now. Um, I created a flagship project and portfolio in the boot camp and eventually landed um, a role. I had quite a few offers with just my portfolio at the beginning because I had worked really hard just to make sure that I it was something that I was proud of. It was something that really explained my process and um, the types of roles that I was kind of targeting. Um, but since then, I have landed an ID role and I've gone back and added even more projects that I'm really proud of and that I know kind of reflect what the what's going on in the market, what hiring managers are looking for, and what I'm just genuinely interested in. So it's been really fun to go back and add to it, but it's always a work in progress. I feel like it's something that will be a little bit of a passion project for mine just to keep it updated, um, but also keep me uh, you, you know, able to be able to talk about my work and be proud of my work and showcase it and have something to, uh, you know, showcase what I can do, not just talk about. So I'm excited to look at the rest of your portfolios and give some feedback as well. Awesome. Thanks, Sabrina. Thanks, Kristen. Uh, and then for me, my name is Robbie Christian. Uh, I was doing scientific scuba diving for 10 years and then transitioned into instructional design. 
And uh, it's been about three years since that happened. And my portfolio was one of the very first things that I put together during that transitional period. It landed me a, a couple of jobs um, and it, it contributed to me landing um, several jobs as a freelancer. And then after a couple of months, I was so busy with the work that I had that um, I didn't really look at my portfolio anymore <laughs> because I was so busy with work. I was using it to get work. And then I was so busy because I had all this work that I, I never really, really looked back at it. So three years down the road, here I am, and I'm actually in the um, in the middle of a complete portfolio overhaul. It's like sort of starting from scratch. And um, my big thing with portfolios is the marketing aspect of it and and setting aside like your brand and your values and what you bring to the table and why people are hiring you. That to me is so crucial. And um, that's sort of one of the first things that I look at when I look at people's portfolios. So I am excited to see yours. Now we do have a, a special opportunity. We have three portfolios that we've set aside to um, to look at, but we do also get your portfolio link ready because we are opening it up to the entire audience here. And so for the next five minutes, we will um, we will accept your portfolio links. We just need to make sure that it's a public URL. If you want an opportunity for us to do a live review, um, within the next five minutes, the first 20 links that come through, we're going to pick one or two of those. And time permitting, in the end of the um, the session, if we still have some time, we will um, we will take a look. And I think within that amount of time, I think we we already have about 20 of them. So this is great! Wow, what a great audience! So um, we have. We have Nathan working in the background. He's going to curate some of those and and look through those and and pick a couple of us to um, to look at towards the uh, towards the end of the hour here. So, without further ado, what we want to do is uh, is start working through the three portfolios that we have set aside. So here we go. So portfolio number one is um, her name is Jacqueline. Hi, Jacqueline. I hope I hope you're here. <laughs> and um, this is just a, as a quick overview of her site. It is still a work in progress, and I think that's so important for all of us to see that that we don't need to feel like our portfolio is finalized. As you heard the three of us talking about, we're we're all about updating and refreshing and and revitalizing our portfolios they they are works in progress they always are and so this is a great example of a site that um, has begun but still has some some work to go with it and and i love that so one of the things that i wanted to bring up here is as i look through the different pages i get to the uh, the about section and i love that it shows especially down here your areas of focus um, and I think I'm on a, a break point right here where the, the S got cut down. Uh, I don't think I can, I can adjust that on the fly. But anyway, I love, there we go. I love that you have those areas of focus that we can see what it is that you do. Now within those, I also want to make sure like there's a lot of breadth here, a lot of a wide array of different skills. And, and it's hard to imagine somebody doing all of those things perfectly well and so one of the things that i would love to see jacqueline is is like this is really my specialty these are all of the things that i do but these are the two or three things that i do really really well and that's what i really am looking for to be to be hired for uh and then and then in addition to that i think we have we have this this graphic that Jacqueline, you put together, and and I love that you that you put it together. It's in your own original work here. Um, I just think because of the size, I think we're missing out on what it is that you're showing us. And so I would love to see that tie in to everything that you're doing here, and and make it really um, flow together and combine with that bulleted list of your focus. So with that, I I want to send it over to to Sabrina. We are a panel of three people, and so I want to I want to pass it around and uh, and let each of us have a turn. All right. So yeah, I, I think it's great. Um, already just like looking at it, what I really want to highlight is the hero section here. Um, I really love her her headshot. It's so inviting and warming. 
and then I'm warm. Like when I look at him, I'm like, yeah, I definitely want to talk to her. I want to know what she's about, what she's passionate about. One thing that I would recommend is, or even just consider is switching the order of the image and the text so that the image is on the left side. Cause here she's kind of like leaning away from her text and almost subliminally, it's almost like she's looking away from it as if that text behind me isn't important. It's behind me. So maybe think about switching it and kind of see how that feels. Um, I would also consider what I'm noticing is we don't have any call to action here. I know this is still a, a work in progress and our first project is gonna be down here. But as you build out and get more projects, you may want to direct your viewer that's looking at your portfolio as something specific. So having a call to action right in your hero section is a great way to do that. Introduce yourself, tell them what you're about and then lead them where you want them to go. So sending it straight to your portfolio page or a contact page. I would recommend portfolio page because you don't want to say like hire me and they don't know your work yet. So getting them to see your work first is a good idea. Um, I would also consider, I love this consistent color palette. I would consider using some of these colors you're using, these greens and oranges to help some of those words pop out a little bit more. So like effective solutions, that's a great thing to highlight that you do. So putting that in a different color just so it pops a little bit more would be fantastic. Um, but yeah, I just really want to focus on the hero section. Again, I, I love this image, very inviting. Um, and let's get it so that we really see this value and highlight some things there. And I'll hand it over to Kristen. Great, great uh, advice and feedback from both Sabrina and Robbie. I wanted to call out the testimonial um, slash uh, recommendation section. That word can be kind of used interchangeably. What I like is that you have a good testimonial um, from somebody. They call out some really great things about your analytical skills and creativity, all really important things on, on the job and in the role. Something that I would recommend is, I, I would know that this was a work in progress, but I found a lot of success with testimonials with um, really making sure that I'm highlighting the most important things. So sometimes if I've gotten a referral, maybe it was like a paragraph or two, I would pull the most important thing that I wanted to showcase and include that. Because sometimes when you have long blurbs, the audience might deter and, you know, go away from that. So really highlighting the most important parts. And in addition to that, something that's beneficial is when you're asking for recommendations or, you know, a testimonial, it, it's not a bad idea to ask them um, to what you want them to highlight. Maybe it could be even an action or some type of project you did for them, what you helped them succeed, because overall your portfolio is going to showcase what you're doing for the client. So anything that you can showcase, um, either coworkers or, or, um, you know, clients, the impact that you made for them, that's going to be what's really, really important. So I would stick with, you know, adding, um, making sure that you have recommendations, testimonials that are brief, but really high highlight what you want to showcase that you can do for the clients. So that would be my, my big advice right there. Um, so the second portfolio that we have here uh, is right here. So this is, um, this is, I'm, I'm actually, I, ha I have to confess, I'm not sure if it's Elada or Ayada. If you're here on the call today, pop in the chat and help us pronounce your name properly. Um, you're from Germany, it seems like, but live in Portugal. So I'm, I'm not quite sure one or the other. But anyway, this is a beautiful site. This is one that has, um, has been put together. Like it, it has a totally different look and feel. And that's the beauty of portfolios and I've seen some of these questions popping up in the chat and just like in general I just want to touch on like every portfolio is different and it doesn't have to follow the same model it doesn't have to follow the same template or the same style or design there can be beautiful portfolios that look completely different from one another and this is a great example that this one looks totally different from um, from Jacqueline's the last one and they both work very well in different ways. So um, what I want to take a look at is, is with this, this start, with this, this home page here, um, the imagery throughout, I think, I think is, is really nice. Like the images that we have to, um, to really know uh, who it is that we're hiring. It's this personal touch, Elada or Ayana, sorry. Still looking in the chat to see if you're here helping me with the pronunciation. Um, and there's great info listed all the way down. Now it is in German, 
Um, I'm not fluent in German. If you're looking at the screen right now, yes, it it is actually in German. <laughs> it's not a trick that your computer is playing. Uh, but I wanted to honor the language that she put it in. So I'm, I'm leaving it in German for now. Um, in terms of things that we could think about, the the last image here, I think it's great. I'm a big believer in like showing off your your workstation and like where it is. Like people can imagine you working there, doing your um, putting together their projects. I think for some reason, I think the focus is not quite on you. I think it's a little bit in the background. I think we can we can do a little bit um, more refined of a picture there with that same view. Um, and then the other thing, so as as we get through and we go through the the portfolio, Ubermich, contact, we have, um, this is great information that you're asking for. Uh, I think it's it's a little bit heavy on the information. If I, if I am a client and I'm looking to hire somebody, I don't necessarily want to put in like not just my name, but and my email, but then also where I live, my telephone number, um, so there, there might just be a little too much we might be able to do well by, by removing it. And the whole idea is we want to remove the obstacles that your clients or your, your future employees have to get in touch with you. The fewer obstacles that are there, the smoother that's going to go. And then the, the last thing that I wanted to call out on this contact page is the, um, the, icons here. The icons don't actually pass on color contrast guidelines. And so I'm wondering if we can use, maybe use some of that gray that you have in here, this darker gray to carry through with some of that, to bring a little bit more contrast that we can see those a little bit easier. So just be careful with that that color contrast. You do a great job everywhere else putting black on that yellow. But um, but those are the things that I, that I want to mention. And before I just keep going, I want to share. I want to share the floor. So, Sabrina, take it away. Um, but yeah, I first want to say that I definitely love a lot of this color palette. As someone who also used yellow and black and gray, <laughs> I think it's fantastic. Um, it's such like a fun, vibrant portfolio, and I, I really love like. Um, I'm going to focus on her portfolio page, but I did notice this consistently throughout in these banners that she has, there are those icons and it really fits this whole thing, right? Because the yellow kind of gives us this like fun, energetic feel. And those illustrations really go along with that, like whole, whole feeling that we're getting from this portfolio. So I think those are fantastic choices. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out is we have this great title here where we're, we know we're in her portfolio, but then we also get a banner that says to like, um, yeah, find out more about her projects. And it, it almost feels redundant, right? Because we have the portfolio piece already. So we know the page we're on, we're gonna see some projects. And then we have this other secondary banner. I think it's okay to cut that. And then we're gonna jump right into the projects, right? That's the important pieces. Those are the pieces we really, really wanna jump into. So I don't think this banner is necessary. Um, and then because it has this little bit of a gap here, it almost feels like something is missing. So taking it out will make it nice and consistent and like flow straight to the first project which is what we really want to highlight. Um, one thing that I did notice that could probably be a pretty quick fix is if we scroll down on the images, if I'm here on this image and keep my mouse there, as I scroll, you'll notice the second image is a bit bigger. And so that kind of makes the alignment feel a little bit off, a little unbalanced. So adjusting it just to get those images the same size, whether that's making the top one bigger or the bottom one smaller, will just help with that nice consistency and keeping these nice straight lines. Um, when we have these nice lines and using white space intentionally, it really helps guide our viewer to like where we want them to go. That's always what we wanna keep in mind as we're creating our portfolios and putting things there is being very intentional about what we do to guide our viewers. It's up to us to tell them like, hey, we want you to go here. Or they just may look around and be like, yeah, I can't find what I'm looking for and they leave. And we definitely don't want that. Um, yeah, I think I think that's the, the big things. There's some little stuff here. Like if we look at the line spacing, when I highlight it, you can kind of see the blue overlaps, but with this one, we don't. This spacing is really good and makes the, the readability much nicer. So again, here, just maybe something easy, just giving it a little bit more space. But overall, I do love the consistency, love the icons. Um, things are really flowing and working really well together. Um, Kristen, what do you, you wanna jump in on here? 
So I wanted to highlight the process write-up. So in the portfolio section, there's a process write-up on ChatGPT. So obviously the process write-up is something that's so important to not only be, ex be able to explain your process to hiring managers and whoever's looking at your portfolio, but also to help you explain and point to things. Um, lots of times in interviews, I've you know mentioned my portfolio or even been asked to share my screen and talk through a pro uh, my process. So I it's really important to have a process write up that not only is detailed, but efficient, talks about your process, talks about the learning theory that you use and um, just those intentional decisions that you made. So I really love the layout of, of her process right up right here. It starts with a great image and some information where you can view the project. I think this is beautiful right here. It lays out the details, tools, and the skills, um, which I think is an awesome start. And then she outlines her process very, very well. As you can see, she has nice headers here, and then she has... Um, beautiful pictures that just kind of illustrate her process and then everything is chunked well so you don't see um you know anything that's overwhelming it's easy to read um one thing i do want to call out here is that some of these images that seem to come from um, a website called miro are a little bit blurry so it's important to have those high resolution images um and i think to to help with that you linked Miro here, which I don't know if it'll show you. Um, but when you click on that link, it basically drags you to Miro and, and asks you to sign up. So it might not be possible with Miro. I haven't recently checked, but a lot of these sites will have a way for you to share a public link um, so that the person viewing can easily access it and not have to, you know, sign up an account. So I would double check and see if that's an, an option, but also try to make that image. I think there's one down here too that comes from Miro. It's just a little bit, it's a little bit blurry. So to be able to really just help um, help your users see this. Clearly, I would make the resolution a little bit higher. Um, but just going back to the layout of this, everything flows together very, very nicely. I love how you can go through the storyboard here. Really nice images. Um, and the last thing I want to call out, this could also, I, I do want to say that it could be a, a translation issue for me. Um, there's a process on implementation. I do want to call this out just because I think it's important for everyone when in considering portfolios um, in the process write up. Um, I, the process of Addy is mentioned, and then it seems like the sections go through each each. Uh, each step of Addy, but then there's an implementation section. And when I translated it again, it could totally be a translation issue. It more so, more so talked less about implementation and more so about how the project rerouted. Um, so what I would do is make sure when you're talking about implementing and different parts of Addy that you're talking about what you actually did um, in implementing, how you implemented that. And um, eventually when you're talking about evaluation, you want to do that as well. But in terms of this section, it just wasn't necessarily talking talking about implementation, it was talking more about a shift in design. So I would keep that under your design section just to make sure that, um, you know, it shows that you're confident that you know the process of Addy um, and can, you know, talk about it effectively. But again, that could be a translation issue, but just wanted to call out that um, just making sure you're knowing and following the process and able to talk about it in your write-up is super important. But again, beautiful, beautiful write-up. It ends with um, talking about evaluation, um, and calls to action. So really nice work here. Awesome. Thanks, Kristen. Um, and Sabrina, great, great insights all around. Um, I do like how we we have our our different <laughs> our different areas where we're we're touching on these uh, these different sites. Hopefully, everybody's getting some some information where um, that they can take away and apply to their own sites. So the last one that we've curated for today is um, right here. Now we've seen one site that was put together with um, with Google, one site that was put together with uh, Squarespace, and this one is a Webflow site. This is what um, what I built my site in, and so I'm familiar with the the inner workings and and how to do it. It's a lot more complex, a lot more complexity and challenge, a much bigger learning curve to to understand Webflow. But once you start to overcome those challenges, there's a lot that you can do to customize all the different things. And um, and Nan really highlights how she's been able to custom make a lot of the stuff here, just in in just the the little hover interactions, to the layout, to the imagery, to the shadows. Um, I just really think this is a visually stunning uh, portfolio 
and it it gives a really strong first impression just the moment that you that you open up the page we have the home page our different projects within the portfolio each one is is carefully and nicely put together and isolated from from one to the next uh, and then we get into her about section she has a button to say hi that opens up a uh, a link to send an email i'm not going to send an email to her <laughs> Uh, but what I want to what I want to hang out in is the about section, and so within here, the the whole idea that I I really want everybody to to walk away from this um, this event with is this idea that that your client or your future employer or the the hiring manager that you hope to be looking at your portfolio. I call all of them the audience. Your audience, they are the hero of the story. They are the ones that they should look at your site and they should feel like, yes, I can solve all of these problems and you are here to help me do that. You, instructional designer, are the guide. You are the one to, to, to carry me through the finish line, to help me do this work. And so the site should really be all about them and a little bit less about you. And the pieces that are about you should be, how can I make the client be the champion or be the hero or be the winner of their business? How can I make them look really good? That's the idea behind a portfolio. And if, if you understand that fundamental piece of a portfolio, then that can help drive the decisions that you make in putting together um, the portfolios of your own. And so I want to linger on this, this about page because it is very beautiful. It is very stunning. It is very creative the way that she has this interactive timeline. That being said, I think if if there were some, some changes that I would consider for Nan's website here, it would be specifically with this, um, this timeline. I think it's a lot about her and it's a lot of great information about her. And as an instructional designer who put together my own website, I've, I really want to promote me as the hero in the story, but we really need to be careful about how we do that. If, if we position ourselves as the hero in the story, that takes away an opportunity for your client to feel as if they are the hero. And so that's really the main thing that I would consider is within this timeline, as beautiful and as creative as it is, that's the approach that I would take is, is look at each one of those elements on the timeline and think to ourselves, how can we make our clients or our hiring managers, future employees, future employers be the winner in everything? And how can everything on that timeline that I put together make them look really good and help them do their job better? That's the idea behind it. So with that being said, I want to pass over the mic and, and uh, let Sabrina take a uh, take the mic for a little bit. Yeah, I yeah, completely agree with everything Ravi was saying. And Nan's portfolio is so, so fantastic, well established. You can tell the care and thought that was put into it. Everything is very intentional where it's placed. And I, I really want to focus on the selected project section. So this is on the landing page or the home page. Um, but it also goes for the projects page as well. Everything is fantastic and very consistent. Um, the style that she's using is called neomorphism, which gives us this cool like highlight and shadow to make feel, things feel like they're popping off of the page, which is a very fun and modern approach. So love how she was able to get all of that to work really well. In the selected project sections, one thing I would consider is this text is really small. And let's see if it'll let me pull up the font stuff here. So yeah, we can see that the size is 14 pixels. Typically, you don't wanna go smaller than 16 pixels um, to keep things legible. And then especially when you get to mobile, sometimes it's a little bit easier to go bigger, right? Since it's a tiny screen, you want it to be legible. So I would consider going a bit bigger, especially because if we look elsewhere, her body text is 16. So for consistency, I think using a 16 pixel would be okay. And it'll also flow really well especially since we have a lot of white space here, we have some room to add in things. So making the text a little bit bigger, I think is totally okay. Um, even with her headings, we're at 20 pixels and looking elsewhere, I believe they were 28 pixels um, for these like H3 kind of headings. 
So bumping those up too, I think would be great. The eyebrow text that she's using here, I think can stay small, right? Because just like eyebrows on our face, it's to frame things, not to draw the attention. Same thing when we use eyebrow text on a website, it's to just frame things, not be the full attention, but it's just there for extra information. So I really, again, love this whole layout. Um, I guess one other little suggestion I have, and I'm wondering if she's considered it yet, is a lot of her buttons are always left aligned, but when we get here, they're right aligned. And I'm curious if it's because it's like closer to the image, but as we're reading, we always start on the left, right, with the with like English. So having it left aligned, I think we'll be, again, creating those nice lines, directing our viewers to those. Um, these are probably like little nitpicky things, but it's just things to consider and keep consistent. Um, and I, yeah, you can tell how, how thoughtful Nan was in her project. Um, Kristen, what are your thoughts? I love everything you just said as when I was just starting out and building my website, I chose Webflow too. And I know how complicated <laughs> Webflow can be, um, but everything you just explained would have been so, so, so helpful. So I'm sure that many people will find it valuable just about the sizing of things and the headers. It can be really confusing and overwhelming because ultimately you're trying to build a website that showcases your skills. And sometimes when you pick a difficult like Webflow, something difficult, it can be hard. And so I think that that's really, really helpful. Um, now I will go ahead and take over sharing my screen here. And again, just want to start with, this is just beautifully put together. Very, very well done. Um, very intentional behind the things that you decided to include. And so that's, um, I love that. I'm navigating straight to I'll just show you all where I am. When you go to projects, I'm going to the first project right here. And this is the process write up. So really, again, really love the organization here. I love that these sections, you can go to the live project, but down here she has direct links to the action map and the storyboard. Um, you can completely see the whole thing and then also go and access it. Um, through clicking on this button. So you're really just not only highlighting everything here, but giving your users the ability to access even further and really see the entirety of you know your storyboards and action maps. So I think that's really, really cool. Um, something else that I think you did really, really well, and um, I, I just love the the intention behind this is the strategic bolded words. I think, you know, when someone's going through a process right up, there's so much information. And of course, we try to keep it brief and digestible, but it still can be a lot. And so highlighting the things that you want your hiring manager's eyes to be directed to is a great idea. And you do an awesome job of that here, highlighting those big words, what's important, what do they need to know? So it just draws the user's eye there. So really beautiful design here. Love everything included. Like I said, love how you can access um, every deliverable. Also really like including the, um, the motion path, the sound effects here. Sometimes, you, you know, of course you want them to click on your portfolio and go through the whole, uh, go through the whole, the whole project, but oftentimes that's not the case. So wherever you can take little clips, pictures, images, and showcase those features you really want to show off is great. And that's what you're doing here, which I love. Also love the before and after section right here. Now, in terms of, you know, in terms of feedback, any suggestions for improvement, the first thing that I noticed here is the responsiveness. So, and this could be a thing with Webflow. Like it, if you've worked with Webflow, the second you change or add a section, it can throw off the responsiveness. And so that could have just been what happened here. But right here, when you have the My Process, as you can see when I'm dragging the size of my browser window, it kind of is adjusting to different heights. So I would fix that um, to make sure that it's responsive. And then other than that, the one thing I wanted to call out here, and it, it's it's just an idea, but something that I think would be really cool um, is in some of your write-ups, there's a coming soon section. Um, and I have, I have a similar, I had at some point a similar section in my portfolio. I like the idea that you're saying something is coming soon, but when there's not a lot of information, it could possibly look to some people as, oh, it's just not finished yet. Or, oh, um, maybe this was just like a, a template that's still included. So what I think would be really cool 
because you're kind of doing a call to action here. So please come later, um, come back later and get in touch to more, know more details. I would give a little bit of a teaser of what it's about. Um, I know in one of my portfolio projects, I did like a brief video kind of teasing what it was going to be about. Um, just to just kind of showcase the skill set ahead of time, but also give them uh, an overview of what is it that's coming. But what would be even more effective is if you gave a brief teaser, whether it's just a description, a video, a picture, um, whatever that is, also linking your say hi um, section here. So get in touch with me, link your say hi. So you know, not only are they seeing that, but now they want to contact you and talk to you about that specifically. So really showing off and being strategic here um, and just adding to that to make it even more effective. Anywhere you can link and, and really give them the, um, make it easy for them to contact you as easy as possible, um, but give them something to talk about. That's, that's even more effective. So that would be another idea for improvement here. But again, lots of thought, and I can tell a lot of time went into this, a lot of, of strategy and intention um, and, and love specifically what you chose to include in those write-ups, the intention behind your decision. So really good job here. Awesome. Thanks. That's just, I love, I love that portfolio. <laughs> I think it's just such a, such a beautiful, um, a beautiful portfolio there uh, that really does well to, to show off and highlight her, her work. So those were the three that we had curated for today's event. But now we are getting into an exciting period of the, the event today in live reviews. And so we had a bunch of really, really good portfolio sites come through. I've actually been looking at a few of them in the, in the background as I've been listening to Sabrina and Kristen talk. Um, and you all are doing a great job with your portfolios. Uh, there, there's some really good stuff out there. Uh, we, have, we have chosen just a few of them. And in these reviews, keep in mind, this is just feedback is love. And we want to spread as far as we can, as much feedback as we can. Uh, but at the same time, keep in mind, this is just a live view. We're just here to, to give a, a quick overview, just a couple ideas. This is not a complete, um, none of the portfolios that we've done today have been a complete in-depth review, the type of review that we give in the boot camp. And so just to set expectations, we'll just take a few minutes on each one. Uh, we'll pop around in any order, anybody that, uh, any order that we have and um, take it from there. And then hopefully we'll be able to reserve a few minutes at the end to answer some of those questions that have come through. So the very next one that we have, the first one that we have coming up is right here, Karen. Um, Karen, I hope you're here. Uh, I mean, I know that you're here. <laughs> I hope that you're still here watching. Um, so this is this is a great site. This is Karen's site. Um, I've just been looking at it for a, a couple minutes, and I I love the contrast and the the bold uh, the bold color choice that you have, and the fact that the colors go so perfectly with your with your image there. I think that's so good. Uh, one of the things that that uh, that I see in this that is the mark of a successful portfolio is when your personality comes through. And I think in this website, your personality seems to come through in this. There is a lot of personality in this site, and I think that's a that's a big plus. So that's really good. Um, just a couple minor things in first looking at it. Um, I don't believe you can check me if I'm wrong. I don't believe the color contrast is um fits the passes the the color contrast guidelines wcag wcag i've heard it spelled out and 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 said wcag also um but it doesn't i don't think that it it passes the accessibility guidelines and so just take a look at that i know that this color is one of your core colors in your color palette but just make sure when you use that, make sure it's up against something that that does pass that um, that color contrast. And then in terms of of the tagline here, I craft learning experiences that uh, are as fun as they are informative, translating tech speak into everyday language. My approach transforms dull, tedious training into dynamic, interactive experiences that captivate and educate. Um, I would almost encourage you to just consider one sentence and have it be that first sentence. That first sentence, I, th I think, is a little bit more powerful than the second one. Uh, and I think it does more to just like lay out there what it is that you do. 
the second one, I think, is what you can sort of speak to as your portfolio goes along. Remember, when you first open up these pages, we just want in an instant to be able to see, like, what what can you offer me? And I think that first sentence is really what does it. And I think it's almost more powerful to just leave it at that one instead of doing both. So I want to I want to open it up, Kristen and or Sabrina. Uh, feel free to pop in and um, and chime in here and tell us what your thoughts are. Yeah, I was just scrolling through and taking a look. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I do love the color palette. It's very fun having those like that teal and the red being so contrasting with each other gives everything this nice like little pop, which is great. Um, I love that. And again, the the hero image, very fun, inviting. I definitely want to talk to you and say like, what? Tell me, tell me all about you. And what do you do? Um, looking at, oh, I forgot to share my screen. Because <laughs> I saw Robbie still up there, so I thought I was scrolling. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to scroll down for you. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going. <laughs> I think I was just scrolling up and down. <laughs> but what, one thing I was noticing is with the buttons, um, we still want to stay consistent, right? So if we look at this hover state, it lightens in color. Lightens to too much it goes to white so we're not having any consistency and i can see maybe the white it pops better on this black um if that's the case then we want to make sure that that happens for every button and again this is just such small details that we're looking for um but if we think about like on resumes when we're adding soft skills and if we say we pay attention to detail it's better to show those things right than to just say it so when we can show it in our portfolios that's great so like here our text is a little bit heavier in weight compared to this one and so just changing those things, always making sure you're staying consistent. Um, I think when we do those things in our portfolio, again, that being our first impression when we're sending people, uh, sending to people, it helps us just to show that like we do our own quality assurance checks. We're checking everything um, even within our portfolios. But yeah, I, I love everything that's going on here. Um, that color palette is really great. But yeah, looking for consistency within those buttons and things like that. Oh, Kristen? Yes. So great feedback there. Going to go ahead and share it. Okay. So Robbie mentioned, you know, showing personality. And that's what I immediately noticed here on this About Me page. The hello, I'm Karen. And just to be clear, not that kind of Karen. Um, I just love the specific um uh, the, the specific things weave throughout that I've seen are just really, really cool that just showcase, you know, your personality, add some humor throughout. Um, now, something that I love as well is the information that you included here. I like how, you know, you talk about your journey, but you're also highlighting in a very, very easy to, you know, see um, format of my skills and tools um, that you really want to showcase. The only thing I would check here is just to make sure it's responsive because when I do kind of play around with it, it can be hard to see for the screen. Um, and then also the alignment here. So I noticed that the contact me, it's centered, but the view my resume seems to be left aligned. Um, but overall, I really like how you broke things up. I think you are do a really great job at um, organizing the information here. And then something that I briefly wanted to call out um, that I think is really important is I really love how you include the description behind the needs analysis and learning objectives. That's something that I um, really, really try to pinpoint is the strategy behind why I did things and something that I was asked about a lot in interviews of, um, you know, why did you make that decision? How are you, how did you justify that? Um, with you know learning theory or learning science in mind and so having some description behind your needs analysis and then even talking about how you came to learning objectives is really powerful and i think wherever you can do that throughout your process like when if you're talking about your storyboard um, and this goes for everyone if you can talk about specifically why you made certain intentional decisions for the audience for your learner um, to make the experience more and more valuable for them to be able to retain information and stay engaged. That's really powerful too. That's something that hiring managers really, really want to see. Um, I would make sure to add, like, it looks like there's supposed to be a link here. Oh, no, it does link off. Um, I would make sure that like, if you have a link hyperlinked here that you make it clear. So like change the text, change the, the width, um, make it bold just to call out that it's not an error. Because when I see that here, yeah, there's like not a lot of indication that that's a link to me. It, it 
looks like a typo because there's not a sentence at the end. So just making sure that a little bit, making it a little bit more clear that that's a link to link out to. Um, but, but yeah, really, really good information here and really like the way it's organized. Great stuff. Really helpful, Kristen. Um, so the, the last link to the last portfolio is, is now in the, uh, in the chat there. Um, I realize we, some of the links we, we haven't put as we're talking about them, but there we go on the last one, we finally figured it out. Um, so Ned uh, has his site and I'm gonna share it right now. Um, this one, here we are. Hi, I'm Ned Widows. Uh, I design and create meaningful and effective learning experiences. Um, I see the E is lost a little bit in that, that background imagery. And so in just choosing your background images, we just gotta make sure that, that um, at all, scrolling points or at most scrolling points we're able to read that text um, so maybe it's just a matter of pushing it over a little bit or pushing the image over a little bit uh, and then the thing there's only there's really just one thing that i want to touch on um, given the time that we have left and that's the the focus on self and i mentioned this in um, in a previous review is that a lot of times i see portfolios that are really well put together but the emphasis in the hero is the person who is the focus of the portfolio and it's not necessarily the client and so as we're looking through here um, who i am the the word i pops up a lot and that is a good indication in your own portfolio when you're going through your own portfolio see how many times the word i happens um, see how many times you can see that and when it's when it's all about i and me it it really brings the focus away from the person that you're trying to sell your work to. And so an example could be like you, you say like, you can improve your business by tapping into my years of experience. You can, you know, save tons of money by <laughs> hiring me because I've done this for so many other people. Uh, but put the emphasis first on the person who's looking at your portfolio and then second on yourself. That's the main takeaway from here. Um, and also with the, um, with the testimonials, the same thing. There's a lot of screen devoted to the testimonials and it's great to have testimonials and referrals and references, but when it comes to be a big part of the page, again, it de-emphasizes the person who's looking at your portfolio and it over-emphasizes who you are as a person and a, and a professional. So always think about them think about your audience and how they are going to improve their business yeah i was gonna jump in i was <laughs> scrolling through as you were talking too i don't know where did oh there it is <laughs> lost the link for a second <laughs> yeah i wanted to talk about the portfolio section also i was noticing um on robbie's screen when he was sharing the nav bar went up to just the top and had a hamburger icon, but you also have a side nav bar, which is pretty cool and different, right? They're usually up at the top, but having it on the side is a cool idea as well. So yeah, in the portfolio page, I really love everything you're doing. I love the amount of projects you have. And then being able to scroll here on your side nav bar is nice because we can just get to the ones that, that like, like this sounds like what they might, the kind of work they might be looking for. As I scroll through the page here, I would consider just adding a little bit more space between the sections. It's like under your button and even, or just like from this little, um, like the design element that's dividing it here, some space between the button and that piece. And then that design piece on the next image with the website, we have all of that room to scroll, right? So you can add more space, give everything like its own time in the spotlight, let everything shine on its own and encourage that scrolling. Having those buttons there are going to push them over. But I really think you have a lot of room to add more space because of this nav bar here on the side, right? We can navigate to whatever project we want to without scrolling. But if we're curious about seeing them all, we can definitely add all the spaces, add space here as well. So yeah, I just wanted to point that out. I think it's great. I love the clean, like minimalistic look and feel of all of your portfolio. But yeah, here in the portfolio, I think just giving it a little more room to breathe, let everything um, shine and give it its spotlight. This is, I really love the way that this site is organized and also love the amount of projects here. Um, the first thing I want to call out and, and is, is just ask. Um, so there's a search bar at the top. So just, um, you know, what is the intention behind that? There could be, um, there could be an intention behind it, right? Maybe you want them to search for things specifically, but it might not be 
Um, it might not be necessary. Um, I think it's important to just think about the intention. You know, do you want them to search for things specifically or is it possibly going to deter um, your audience from, you know, looking at your projects um, and going through that? Just a thought here, not something that you have to take off. And Robbie, if you want to add to that um, after, go feel free to add to that. But I did want to talk about, I think this is the one that I saw here. Okay. This, um, I love, I love how this process write up is, is laid out. Something that I love is the approach section, as I talked about, um, in the, in the last review, just having that explanation for why you did something is really cool. So I like how you just worded it with your approach and you talked about how you were consult consulting and how you devised this plan. Um, I think this is really, really cool to show kind of that theory and why you did something. I would go far, even farther here, um, and not necessarily make things longer, but just determine what is it that you want to focus on. I think it was right here. Um, so it's, you talked about how you design, uh, devised a plan and it said this informed how to distribute cohorts, but I would talk about why did you know that? Why did that needs analysis lead you to make that conclusion? I think that's something, you know, you'll likely get asked about in interviews, you know, why did you make that decision? But it could, it could make this even more powerful here. I think it's already powerful, but that's something that you could do to make it even better. Why did you make that decision, um, with the needs analysis? And then... Let's see. Other thing here, um, I do like what you decided to bold. Um, there does seem to be a little bit of inconsistency between some of the sections here, right? Like this one is single space. There's a little bit more spacing between the quotes. So um, also looks like some of the um, the fonts might be different from what I can see here. So just making sure that things are as consistent as possible um, and as much as you can get your, you know, the hiring managers to look at the content and not like, be confused by the different lengths or heights or or colors of things the more you can get them to focus on what you want to show the better so really good job here awesome we are getting right up to the top of the hour and so we do have five questions that have come through that have been um, pulled aside i don't have the time to show them on screen or restate the question i'm just going to go through and answer them uh and so hopefully with the context without the context you're able to put it together um there is a question about doing um projects if you're asked for on a job interview or an application that they want you to do sample projects even though you have all these samples on your portfolio yes if if the company seems like a great company that's that's you would like to work for and the opportunity seems good it is not uncommon to be asked to do work samples for that specific um, that specific uh, role. And so go ahead and do those. And then your portfolio serves as supplementary information and resource that they can see what it is that you do. Uh, is there a specific image to have in the bio section? Every, every portfolio is different. As you've seen, there have been a variety of different ways that people have incorporated images of themselves different images of not themselves in the page. And so it's sort of open for interpretation. And the biggest thing that I can say is do something that reflects you and your brand and what you want to be hired to do. That's the idea that you really want to connect with on your portfolio. Uh, what is mandatory to include in a portfolio? I would say the the works. I would say the, the actual pieces of information, um, the 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 projects themselves so that somebody can look and see what projects you've done they can see them for yourselves better yet would be if they can actually interact with them too and then um, having a write-up to show that you've used uh, instructional design theory and science that is critical to show that you know the theory and science and you can apply it to solve those real world problems and here are some examples of how you've done that i would say that's the most important piece um, how critical is it to include a photo of yourself? Like I said before, not, not hugely, not hugely important. And then what do we think of utilizing AI? Do it, do it, utilize AI in any way that you would like. <laughs> like AI is, is a really powerful and emerging tool in our tool belts. Um, it is much better to get on the train than let the train run you over. And so use that tool 
to help you use that tool to help and um, in any way that looks for you whether it's making beyond videos or um, coming up with a, a color palette or putting together some of the copy or the text that goes onto the, the website feel free to utilize ai especially if that's something that you're marketing yourself as so to round out our time together we're really close to that top of the hour there. Um, we we really intend and hope to do more of these events like this and looking at more portfolios and even diversifying and going beyond just the portfolios as well. So with portfolios, check out the YouTube channel. Uh, specifically, there are a handful of videos that are specifically portfolio reviews. And so you can look into those and get some more inspiration and some more ideas for what to put, uh, how to make your portfolio and what goes into a great portfolio. Uh, and feedback is super important. And so wherever wherever you have a network to connect with, connect with that network. Get involved in that network. And uh, if you want to be part of ours and you're not yet, go to community.devlinpeck.com or as soon as this, this um, session is over, you're going to be routed to the, the portfolio showcase. And from there, you can get in touch with the team and connect with our network if you don't already have one. But feedback is so important to us that, that it's just all about putting yourself out there, getting into the space, and, um, and really improving and transitioning into instructional design. So that portfolio showcase that's going to pop up, feel free to peruse that. And then if you would like to really get plugged in and get actually get a lot of one-on-one -on -one feedback from bootcamp pros from the team, then feel free to join us for the bootcamp. We're doing a waitlist system and there are only three open spaces for this month remaining. And so between now and Monday, there are, um, there are three spaces to be filled. And so once those are filled, you'll end up um, being pushed on to the, the next month. So don't hesitate to hop on there. Uh, and for me, that is everything that I had. Sabrina, Kristen, I don't know if you had anything else to uh, to include, but there's that pop-up on the screen as well uh, that you can learn more about the ID Bootcamp. I love seeing the project. So thank you everyone for attending. I um, you know, really enjoyed looking at these and just super um, grateful to you know be here with you all. So thank you. Yeah, just to reiterate what everybody said. Yeah, thank you guys for being so vulnerable and sharing your work. I know that can be the scary part too, especially when you you poured in all of these hours into creating the projects and the portfolio and then putting it out there. It, it can be scary, but like Robbie has said many times and what we reiterate in the bootcamp too, feedback is love. Helps you get your things nice and polished to make sure you're putting your best self out there. So thank you all for putting your portfolios out here. Appreciate it. And we hope to see you at the next event. And until then... Take care and we'll talk to you all later. Hopefully to see you around the uh, the circle community. Bye everybody.